Stay tuned for the Joan Quinn Profiles. Joan served the state of California as a member on the Arts Council and on the Film Commission. She was formerly on the Architectural Commission and fulfilled two terms on the Fine Arts Commission for the city of Beverly Hills. As an editor for Andy Warhol's Interview Magazine, Condé Nast Publications, and the Hearst Corporation, Joan covered the world of fashion, the mysteries of food, the excitement of theater, and the international art scene. She continues to find people who are on the cutting edge of their professions. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. We're here on location as the guest of Donnell Dadigan at the Hollywood Museum on Highland Avenue in the heart of Hollywood. Waiting to be profiled are actress Susan Clausen and vocal genius Ariana Savalas. Arts educator, actor, consultant, writer, Susan Clausen was born and raised in New Jersey and graduated from the University of Denver. She's a resident of Tucson, where she had uh, directed the Invisible Theater for the last 40 years, or where she has directed. You continue to direct there. Uh, they so love her in Tucson that she's garnered award after award for working uh, with experimental, exceptional, experimental Except things, exceptional children, people with AIDS, uh, and arts programming. Hi, Susan. <laughs> Hi, Joan. I'm so excited to be with you. You got an award from the governor in 1985. That's how much they loved you. And for so long, <laughs> they for loved so long. you. What was that award for? That was, uh, they picked an Artist of the Year award. So that was 19... 80 something? 85. 85. Yeah. And so, I'm still here. I know. <laughs> so how did you get to Tucson? Why Tucson? Why Tucson? I was uh, graduated from University of Denver. Yes, yeah, so that's not in Tucson. No, it's not. <laughs> and I, it was before the whole resurgence of the theater community in Denver. Oh, so because it's, Denver's fantastic it's fabulous. now. It's I know. In fact, we're going there with the show. Oh, are you? Yes. Because it's the best. It's a one with the, absolutely. But at that time, there were small theaters. And so we were looking. I was married at the time. We were looking for a place for my husband to go to graduate school. Oh, I came to Tucson. I and see. the rest is her story. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so, and you just started working. Yes. And you started doing arts education. You worked absolutely. with the city schools? Yes, I absolutely do. I have, uh, as you said. You continue to work oh, with the city absolutely. schools? I have a project called uh, Project Pastime, and it's with mentally and physically challenged young people oh. at a middle school, and we've done a documentary. We do a show called The Me Inside of Me. What so do you do? You do? You make a film? We make, well, we do drama, we do music, oh. we do dance, and then it culminates in a production, and it was the subject of a documentary called Such Good Friends, oh. which was fabulous, and Amanda McBroom, this, yeah, yes, wonderful wrote, singer. Wonderful and songwriter and wrote the theme song for it. Oh. And she loves these kids. It's been a fabulous project. So when you do something like this or your project, do you bring in educators to work under you and you tell yes. them, teach them what to do? Or, well, yeah. what we do is we have teaching artists come in who are members of the Invisible Theater. Oh. And they come oh. in and actors. work. Actors. Actors. actors dancers, musical oh, directors, so they learn music, students who um, can't read, memorize lyrics, they memorize lines. Do you, can you take that all around the country? It's such a great it's project. It's a great prototype to do prototype, that. Prototype, yeah. yeah. It really is. You, know, you need the right combination of a great classroom teacher. I always say it's the best of public education. Would they come to you? Can they come to you and say, we, we would love to, to have you program this. Yes, absolutely. Because it's really important. It is. You see that not only do these young people build their own esteem, it opens their minds up for all kinds of ed well, educational yes. things. It's fabulous that way. I know. I used to think I knew how to work a room. I pale in comparison to them. Oh, they start learning. <laughs> huh? Oh, yes. So, so you just mentioned that you have people from the Invisible Theater. What yes. is the Invisible Theater? We are a not-for-profit company celebrating our 42nd anniversary. We do a main stage season. 42 years. Isn't that something? You've been in Tucson a long time. A long time. <laughs> but, and so we do a main stage season. We bring in guest artists. We also do special events that come in. So do you have a, a space? 
We do. We have an 80-seat theater, and then uh -huh. when, um, may she rest in peace, Lynn Redgrave came in, we had a 496-seat uh -huh. theater. So or, you bring artists from yes, all over the from world? from all over the world. Uh, and they theater. come to guest? They guest, guest act? Us. They guest perform, either if they have a show or a cabaret, oh. like Dame Cleo Lane and Johnny, may he rest in peace, came. We've had them a couple of times, and then we also incorporate an educational component oh. into it because it's such a wonderful opportunity it's, to introduce arts to youth. Do you think that it's easier to do that because it's a smaller city, a smaller community? Is it? Well, I, you know, th these are tricky times for everyone with public school funding, and sometimes we have to raise the money to get the bus to bring oh, the kids. I see, yeah. But I, I know L.A. has wonderful arts education programming where artists go in right. and work with you. So uh, the Philharmonic sends them absolutely. in, and the, the people and at the Center Music Theater Center. Group, and they yes. have it at the Pasadena Playhouse. And the Pasadena Playhouse Wonderful, does. the diversity project. They, they have, have really done a great job at I the agree. Pasadena Playhouse. Yeah. Uh, we had one of the assistants on uh, to... Uh, Sheldon Epps yes. and she explained the outreach and they go into the community so when your show is there they'll we're be bringing people yes. in like that yeah. um, we're gonna get to your show okay. but I want to talk to you you also did this comedy team yes. what is it malls malls and, and Sue's. and what was that this was really again in the late 70s 80s we were we were but it shows that you've continued yes that we have um, we were sort of the darlings of the feminist movement we would do so <laughs> social and political satire and we both came from an improv background oh, so which really helps today in all of the performances yes. also and that's probably what you teach with the kids Absolutely. So, to, so that they're not so structured exactly um, and you got these awards for arts education I guess yes. that's what we've been talking yes. about as far as that goes um, and the disability awareness how do, how do you make people aware of that well we by watching these students perform. How do you approach it? How well, do you... they come to the, you know, people come to public performances and all of a sudden the disability fades away and the ability oh. shines through. So you have oh, uh, that's so someone great. who has um, a physical challenge, but they're dancing. It's someone fantastic. in a wheelchair, they're dancing. You put those people oh, on yeah. stage. And they have, they gather the confidence. Confidence. That's, that's it because we believe in them. We right. hold strict boundaries and high bar, high bar. And I really believe that they often, and I would say most times, exceed the expectation. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Because you put your trust in them. Totally. And, 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 and they I can think, trust, and we yeah, respect them. Right. And, that's and a different thing. Yeah. Okay, so I, have we covered a lot of that past? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we've covered a lot of it. But then, Edith Head has been around for a long time. Yes. How long have you been working on this project? Uh, Ten years. A oh, it is. A decade. So how did it start? Okay. So I have performed. One person shows I've directed. and that's uh, that, We yeah, didn't get into that shows. in the background, but, but that's, you that's did right. do yeah. that. But I had never put together a show for myself. Oh, so I I'm see. So I'm home, and I'm watching TV, and it's a biography channel, and I went, God, there's Edith Head. Huh. I look like her. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> nobody had ever said that to me, ever. They would say Imogene Coco, but they would oh, never say... Oh, that's true, yeah. They never said Edith. So I watched, and then it was five feet, one and one quarter inches. I thought, well, that's interesting. And then, same size as same you? Same size. And then it continued, and I saw that there was an incredible woman behind the iconic Edith Head. Well, what was she as an icon? Tell the, our, our well, audience. Well, she's iconic in that she worked on 1,131 films in a, a, a As career, a dress designer. As a costume. A costume designer. Right. That spanned a dec 60 years in the business. She never walked off a set in a huff. Unusual. No one had that kind of career. What studios was she? Paramount, and then after yeah. 1967, when the studio system really ended, the corporations came in. Oh. Through her friendship with Alfred Hitchcock and Lou Wasserman, she moved over to Universal for the last 14 years of her life. Oh, she did, and she really ruled the roost. She did. She, she put a face to what a costume designer was. She lived on Benedict Canyon because I used to, we used to go to her house for parties. Cold which water, was, yeah, yeah. Cold water, yeah. which was absolutely beautiful, Spanish, beautiful house. And I used to see them, Bill right. and Edith, at the Safeway shopping. 
<laughs> he was so nice. So he was nice. a lovely I, guy. Yeah, I think that, you know, that was her second husband. He was and really I, nice. Yeah, I would love of her life. Yeah. They were great friends and great support to one another. So she was active in the community is what I'm trying to say. She wasn't just stuck no, on the stage. Heard, I have three year, the last three years of her life calendars. Oh, you do? Yes. And you look through those. <laughs> she was busy doing benefits for animals. And we always, we, she always opened her house. We yeah. were always up there for some kind of benefit. Yeah. And then we'd have committee meetings there too. Yeah. It wouldn't just stop with that. No, she was very, uh, and I think that was part of her success is that she was so accessible through writing for a photo play during the fashion shows. Yes. People come up to me no matter where I am and say, I knew Edith. Or, oh, well, you know, and that's the same. You know, because so we wonderful. did know her. Absolutely. But not just in Los Angeles. Oh, all over? This all over, oh. which is incredible. So how do you transform yourself? I, uh, <laughs> and I do. You put glasses on. I have the glasses. <laughs> Um, when we first met, and Patty Calistro is my collaborator who wrote the book, Edith Heads Hollywood, and we had 13 hours of taped interviews, and the Academy's been wonderful and loaned us prop Oscars and the recreations so you have on the set. When you walk in and you see the set, you're swept away. So is it her office? It's wherever we are. No, is her uh, is the but set it's, the? Oh. It's not her office. It's really wherever we are, and she brought some of her things around oh, to show really? you. So you walk in, and you're. But we'll be at the Pasadena Playhouse uh, upstairs, upstairs at the Carrie Hamilton. So that's where we'll be. And my transformation. When we were interviewing, we talked with Bob Mackey, who was a sketch artist. Wonderful. Was he worked with her? Yes, yeah, sketch artist for Edith. So he said, well, you could let this part of your hair grow. And I said, I'd really like a full transformation. So we went. So you to, don't wear a wig? I do wear a wig. Oh, you do? So we do. <laughs> I was so we went ask, yeah. to Renata, who's Bob Mackey's oh, wig right. maker for Cal Burnett. So I have a full wig, the glasses. You know, we set it in a working situation. So she wears a simple suit, which is what she did. And it's four. Formatted, so it's a yeah, real I was going to ask you yeah. about the format. How it's is it? It's a real it? conversation. I have a, a host, a wonderful host, Stuart Moulton, who takes questions from the audience. Oh. And I have to make sure they're time appropriate. I can't answer anything after 1981. And you know that subject, though. Yes. Or does he filter it for you? Well, he gives the cards back. And I see. Hopefully, I have enough information. I, I really study every day. Before we leave, have you have played other strong women? Yes. And, and who were they? Oh, I did Shirley Valentine. Oh, yeah. I did Bella in Lost in Yonkers. You know, so a wide range. Gold, I did, and, oh. Who did it? Uh, I forgot. I forgot. What, the... the um, what's her in the, name? In the film? France, in, from Paris. The art collectors. Did you play? Oh, no, I never did. You d <laughs> Right. But Mercedes Rule did, right? Oh, she did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but I've, I've had a wonderful, and I, I feel so blessed. And to keep this legacy alive of Edith Head, who was a one of a kind in a world of knockoffs. Edith was a true original. <laughs> and I'm so glad you came to tell us about it. We've been, we've been following you for not 10 years, but for a long time. Yes. Thank you, Susan. Well, thank you so much, Joan. You're just wonderful. And don't go away, because we'll be right back with singer Ariana Savalas. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. We're taping at the Hollywood Museum and the historic Max Factor building, which is a fabulous place to visit. Singer Ariana Savalas, the daughter of actor Telly Savalas, and inventor Julie Savalas, was born in Hollywood and raised in Minnesota. She attended Catholic public schools, toured Europe as a singer in her teens, studied Shakespeare and acting at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts in London, and then attended Penn State University. We'll find out what she was doing there. She's appeared in clubs across the U.S., one such being Herb Alpert's Vibrato in Beverly Hills. So before we get into Vibrato and all these other places that you've talked about, tell me what you were doing as a teenager touring Europe. Oh, I have no idea, Joan. <laughs> I mean, it was so random. You know, my, my father 
uh, used to film over in Austria. Ah. And so we used to go back there. Um, we loved it so much. There was this tiny little town that he used to film in. And we loved it so much when we were children that our family actually went back there every year, every summer. And so, very long story short, it was a rainy day, and somebody told me to go into the park because there was this mobile karaoke station that people were recording. <laughs> you could take like 15 shillings and go and record a CD or something. Uh -huh. And so I was really bored, and so I just walked in and, and sang some god-awful song, probably terribly out of key. and. Somebody heard it and, and entered me into a, a, a national contest. They did? And yeah, it was so, it was so random. And I, and I was just a kid. I mean, I was barely 16, 17. And then I signed my first record deal um, out of that contest and, and toured Europe while I was still in high school. That's amazing. And absolutely. No, no it was it you, just kind of bloop. You talk Lop about my life. you talk about being with your father. So you did travel. He died when you were very young, yes, though. Yes, I was seven. So, obviously, just from what you're saying, he had some influences on your life. Oh, very much so. I mean, probably the biggest influence was family. You know. Oh, is that right? Extremely, Closeness. Oh, very much so. Yeah, I, especially after he died, I think my family just sort of developed this little Savalas union <laughs> Did you? together, and everybody just sort of stuck together. And and my mom and my brother and I are very close. Um, did you think you were going to be an actress? Or not, did you always think you were going to be a singer? I knew from a very young age that the only thing I ever wanted to do was be an artist. I didn't know oh, an artist. what kind of artist. I mean, I was just such a drama queen when I was a kid. I mean, it was a humongous <laughs> ham. But how know. could you be in Minnesota? No, of course not. No, well, you know, that was something, you know, people always ask me if my dad was ever an influence on that. I never saw him act, really. I mean, when I was a kid, he was you never... Watch TV? He was never Papa the Celebrity. He was just Papa, you know. So it was um. just, you know, he was just... My I was going to ask you if you were walking down the street, did people come up to him and you noticed that? You know, goodness, I don't know. But I do know that every story I've ever heard of anybody who comes to my shows or they knew my father, and they say, I met your father when I was coming and playing poker or playing golf or smoking or whatever. I know. Even whatever in the green horrible <laughs> debaucherous past Is that a word? Even, even in the green, pastime. In the green <laughs> room here. Everyone really? <laughs> I know. It's either it's either smoking cigars right. or playing golf or playing poker or gambling. But, 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 but everybody always him. said he never turned down an autograph and he was always uh, a gentleman, which I believe because he was a lovely guy. So. so that was great. So your mother was an inventor. Uh, is an inventor, yes. She is an inventor. Yeah, what did she invent? Yeah, she's amazing. What I mean, did she, she She's do? actually, she's an artist. She paints, um, but she also invents home products. Uh, she invents uh, things for your office, things for You're your kidding. laundry room, all these really random things. I mean, I never do my laundry, so like maybe I but would. But do they work? If I use some of her products. <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah, she's unbelievable. Really, really incredible things. That That's, I would so you, you never couldn't be an of. inventor because you really have to have that inside of you, right? Never be anything but a musician, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Is she musical? People keep telling me I'm smart, and I won't believe it. Is she musical? Uh, she's a beautiful piano player, um, oh. and she's a great singer, but she'll never sing for anybody. She's very shy. Oh, so that's uh, where My you mom got has it. a gorgeous voice, yeah, but my grandma... Was, was that her mother? Her mother, yes. Okay, and, so it uh, comes down the world. Yeah, it, it trickled down. <laughs> and my dad was like, have you ever heard my dad's records? No, he said Oh, my too. God, he was like the Hoff, kind of, because he had, a, he had like a gold record oh, in wow. Europe. And a lot of people knew that he that he sang here. Uh, you know, he had a review in Vegas, and oh, I so, didn't but know like that. a lot of people didn't know that he he could actually sing. So well. you brought so you're you're bringing yeah. us a lot of information. Yeah, I mean, continue to bring us. You the Ariana Smallis Encyclopedia. What would you like to know? <laughs> you went to all these classes in religion, but then you also took criminology. Yeah. It's How just, similar were those? I'm a paradox. John. Really? I, I I never know what I'm doing. Uh, you know, really, college for me was, was you know, I, I always preferred to study music on my own, and when I was studying acting, I was in my repertory theater, so I never, you know, went to college. So you didn't do the, that. You, so you didn't when I went to college, <laughs> yeah, for when I went to college, I, you know, I wanted to to study things that I would probably never use that just interested me. <laughs> really, I mean, I was like... <laughs> I told my parents, I was like, you know, I'm really, you know, I'm really 
such a wonderful person at making money. You know, I chose to be a musician right. and I studied theology. But I could see so. you at the FBI. Oh, putting on this act and getting all the information you needed. I could be the best spy in the world. I know. I mean, I know. jazz singer by day, covert spy exactly. by night. Exactly. And it's were you I'm that saying. in these two foreign films? You were in a <laughs> Lithuanian film and a Polish film. Oh my God, where are you getting this? <laughs> what were those? Cats out of the bag now, Jim. <laughs> what did you do? Um, well, you know, when I first moved here, I wasn't, um, I wasn't supposed to stay here. I was supposed to go to college in oh. London. Uh, oh. That was my plan, um, is to, you know, to go to acting school. And so when I came out here, I graduated high school early, and I was like, man, I got a few you know, months. I have three f free months because I graduated, um, you know, in December instead of in April. So I had this, this semester available. And so I wanted to study film. I wanted to study acting uh. before I went over to London. And very long story short, I was sitting down with an old family friend of mine and they were just staring me up and down. They're like, you could look Lithuanian. And oh, I was yes, like, you oh, could. All right, yeah. fine. <laughs> so that's how it and happened. that's how it happened. And they got me this audition for for this wonderful um, passion project. Uh, it was a true story about a Lithuanian Holocaust survivor oh, named that's Miriam, so great. a Jewish woman who concealed her identity um, to be a Christian uh, for forty years, and it traces her life. Wow, and it's a phenomenal story. And so that must have been a real turning point for you. I did not deserve that part. I, it was it was just, fantastic. It was wonderful. Yeah, and I never dreamed that something like that could happen to me so early, you know? know, and it really sort of changed the course of my whole life because I remember when I got the part even, I called, you know, my mom and my, my family friend who got me the part, I was like, yeah, but I mean, like, I was supposed to go to college, I don't know what to do, and he's like, are you nuts? You know, this is, this is what, you know, this is four years of college in right, one, right. in one, and trust me, it was. So I basically learned how to act on, on camera because I'd never done anything but musical theater. And were they helpful? Was the director great? Everybody must have been really fun. helpful. Really, really, just a, a very passionate, wonderful experience. I'll never forget it. And you are passionate on stage. You've sung at the McCallum Theater in Palm Springs, uh, Chicago Signature Room, mm -hmm. what, Birdland Jazz Club. Yeah. Do oh, you I sing the same repertoire? Ago, no, no, it's always different. Um, I choose my repertoire uh, every show because it's always different. You know, you can sing the same songs over and over again. Um, you know, some shows will have the same song, some will be different. So what would you sing, say, in Palm Springs that you wouldn't, or, and what would you sing in Chicago? You know, it, it really doesn't depend on the location, although I, I wouldn't, the audience. I wouldn't sing New York, New York, and New York. I thought about it. I thought about scaring the audience. I just did, I, I performed at Feinstein's, at Michael Feinstein's club, and I was this close to coming on stage and going, da, da, Perfect. da, 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 are you nuts? Yeah. <laughs> but I thought they'd have a heart attack, so I decided not to do that. Um, you know, but it really just depends. You um, choose it? Yeah, it depends on what's going on in my life, you know, because everything mm. in my show sort of centers around, you know, me getting to know my audience, my audience getting That's to know I mean. me. So, it's all a story, so. But you can't change the music while you're standing there, can you? Oh, well, yes. it's live theater, honey. You can do oh, whatever you, do. you want. Oh, you do. So <laughs> it you happens. Oh, <laughs> not so you, Usually not intentionally, though. But you, so you can feel that and change your oh, songs. Oh, sure, yeah. I mean, oh. it's, it's like live theater. You have a... You have a base, you have a skeleton, ah. and then the meat is filled out by whatever the heck That's happens. That's fantastic. <laughs> when you, 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 you sang uh, at Vibrato, yes. and your accompanist was Corky Hale, yes. who was a fantastic musician. Oh, she's marvelous. And, um, and she's she happy, that, too. She Obama that, won. <laughs> she had that great story, though, about going to Mr. Diamond. Oh, well, Morris is, is actually the one who introduced me to the director of that film as well. That's oh, the family friend that I was oh, talking about, Morris Diamond. He's, he's an amazing, amazing guy, very special friend of mine. So, so he introduced me to Corky. He forced, Corky said, he forced, forced he did her forced. to listen yeah. to you. No. And then she said, she's better than any bird I've ever heard sing. <laughs> it, I think she was expecting the worst, especially because... How old know, is Mr. Diamond? He just turned 91, 92. So she had to do this out of respect. No, she didn't. I mean, he demands respect. He's one of those guys that even when he was 40 years old, I'm sure he was pulling the same shtick. But Morris believed in me. You know, he had heard me sing. He was actually uh, a huge reason why I discovered jazz and I got into jazz because... 
You know, I came out here and I was, I was, I, you know, three years ago was when I really moved out here again to pursue music. And I came and I was doing, you know, these shows and I did everything from like the Whiskey Go Go to, to the Cine Space in Hollywood. But were you singing the same kind of No, it wasn't. I was, I was doing my original music and I was like fiddling around at the piano and I was kind of like singing my original songs, getting nowhere fast. And it was like, you know, I did two shows before I was like, there has to be a better <laughs> to break into this business and and Morris was the one who discovered that I knew like every jazz standard that could possibly and so well, I started and he introduced me to Corky and she was the one who produced my first cabaret show and I fell so madly in love with it that that was the catalyst for me starting my career in jazz. And so then you had an album with her? With her? She, well, uh, she did an she album, did an album and, and I guested on it. Yes. And chose you to sing yes, on it. Yes, yes, yes. Me and, uh, and Brenna Whitaker, who's also an amazing singer. Um, she has a show at the W here in Hollywood. And, uh, and uh, Trisha, God, and... All these so amazing she has several women. Yeah, women's. Sally Kellerman and, and oh, yeah, I lots know. of really great guest singers. It's a great CD. You should, we, you should get we, it. It's wonderful. Do you, we have it. Oh, good. Okay. We do Fabulous. So that's why we Was that a plug? You, like, this <laughs> exciting vocalist. Oh, thank you. <laughs> do you continue taking singing lessons? You know, I took. I, I never took vocal lessons to, to learn how to sing. I learned how to keep it. Um, be, oh, and I, I take, keep it. Yeah, I, I, I study with Ron Anderson. Um, he's my vocal coach, and he's a wonderful guy. Um, that's an interesting point, yeah. to keep it. Yeah, well, because, because I was doing so happens. many shows, and, you know, my, my vocal warm-up was, <laughs> all right. <clears throat> but now you know what to do. And we're good. You know, shoot a shot and <laughs> go on stage, but it doesn't really work past 19. So... You know, yeah, I, I had to learn how to keep it. So, you, do you sing at all? No. Have you ever God, sang? Listen what? to this voice. What it's are you horrible. talking about? It's sexy. Oh, what are you talking about? But I thank you for coming. Oh, of course, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much, and thank you for watching my dear Ariana tonight and today and all the time. And go see her wherever she is. Keep writing to J A Q U I N N one at AOL.com. We'll see you next time.